Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark TV. You know who I am, Dr. Angela Chester, and I am so glad that you are able to join me here today. You know what I like to do on my show. I want to enlighten, inspire, and empower you to become your best self. Now, scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on a fire. And today, we want to get you fired up about our book, and our guest. Our guest is Dan Bugsby, and we are talking about his book, Lost in Time, Trapped in a Prehistoric World. So you know what we're going to tell you to do? Go on, get comfy, get cozy, get your coffee, or get your tea, because we are about to get started. Hello, Dan. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Daily Spark TV. Thank you. It's great to be here. Absolutely. Now, before we get started, we always like to give our guests an opportunity to introduce themselves to perhaps those few people out there that may not be familiar with you or your work. So you might call it the bio question. Um, in a few words or sentences, who would you say that Dan Busby is? Well, I think uh, I'm a regular guy who uh, uh, went to college as a music major. And right now I have no instruments, no piano, no nothing. So I started going crazy. So I started to uh, branch out. And I found out that writing is kind of like music. It's, uh, it's a creative business. And, uh, and that's, that's who I am. If I don't do something creative, I'm in trouble. And uh, I, I'm a registered nurse. I've been, uh, I worked as one since 1987. And so uh, I'm, I'm retired, but I'm still working full time. And uh, I've, got a, I've got a disabled wife at home who I'm taking care of at the same time. And she, she was my inspiration. She wrote a book first and then I said why can't I do that uh, I think I'm going to give it a try so I love that and you know there's nothing like having a spouse that really inspires you that pushes you to be the absolute most that you can be so now being an author you gave us a little bit about that story now that you have that as one of the labels that you wear author how does it feel uh wearing that hat on a regular basis well it's kind of different and it feels good because it's it's creative and i found out that's who i am uh i actually shouldn't shouldn't not ever have been a nurse because it's to me it's the more facts and all this stuff you learn the better you are and that's not me but i'm i'm able to bite the bullet and do that so, uh, so anyway, uh, that's, uh, I don't know, I'm happy. If, if I stay happy, if I do whatever I have to to stay happy. And to me, it's being creative. So uh, uh, this is it. Uh, and uh, being an author is a good thing, except that I feel like I'm an infant author or author, if you know what I mean. I need to take a few baby steps and get out to be where the big adults are. <laughs> That's my goal. I like that answer, you know, and, and it's, it's true. I think that for many of the things that we do, if we're honest with ourselves, we look at it and we are in, in that infancy stage for quite a while for many things before we're able to uh, be an adolescent in it or become really mature in what you do. So you're right. I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more that the more we hone our skills, the better, the better we become. So I, I agree with you there. Now the title of of your book, Lost in Time, Trapped in a Prehistoric World. I love it. Why were those words appropriate for the title for your book? Okay, it's because basically Lost in Time is the title of a number of books and movies. I mean, 
that's what they're called, lost in time. So I wanted a subtitle that explains. So trapped in a prehistoric world is a subtitle. Uh, so uh, it actually, I couldn't come up with a better way to say it. The guy works, he invents a time machine and then he becomes a victim of his time machine and they send him back. And uh, he's not lost in the Cretaceous period. He's there because he knows they sent him, but he gets lost when he tries to build one in a primitive environment. He gets lost when it actually sort of works, but it doesn't work completely. And then they really get lost. <laughs> so. I like that. I like that. Now, we know that the book is sci-fi, but I have to ask, have you always been a fan of the sci-fi genre or did you find that it really allowed you to be as creative as you want it to be with your book or maybe a little bit of both? Yeah, I've always been a fan of sci-fi and especially time travel. And I can explain why uh, with time travel, it's kind of a selfish reason. There is so much potential and so much uh, leeway for adventure uh, in, in time travel. And the reason for that is obviously uh, nobody's ever done it yet. And therefore you, you can't be criticized for doing it wrong or coming up with a incorrect <laughs> this or that. So it's got uh, un unlimited potential for adventure and, uh, and that's, that's kind of why I stick with it. Uh, and it actually works, it actually works because it's easier to think of something. You write uh, about time travel and when you get there, you uh, get ideas about where you're going next. You don't, you don't just plan it out and uh, do the whole thing, you, you kind of go one step at a time and time travel does that for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you really said something there because I've spoken with some other uh, sci-fi writers for radio and they said the same, pretty much the same thing, that boy, does it really allow you to be as creative as your imagination will allow you to be. And there's no right or wrong in, in the sci-fi world. It's, it's just whatever the author wants to bring to you. And, and I love that. Now, how would you say... Um, or is the best way to really consume the book? I know that many times authors will write it in a particular way um, that they give you chapters and you should read from chapter to chapter or simply read the entire book cover to cover or maybe even break it down into sections. Is there any one way that you would suggest that the reader um, really dive into the book or is it reader's choice? That's reader's choice, but the, the two fans that I know I have uh, both told me that they couldn't uh, put it down. They read it in one setting. So, you know, I'm hoping that there's more than two out there somewhere, but uh, yeah, but really whatever your reading habits are, uh, I think you should follow them. <laughs> but, uh, so, but it's built, uh, I like to put in short chapters uh, for some reason it's easier to, uh, have a break just about whenever, wherever you want to and you don't get bogged down in the chapter. So you can do whatever you want there and it works out. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, I think that when when you're writing, the author needs to be able to enjoy enjoy the journey just as much as the as the reader does as well. So I, I like it that you've made the chapter shorter and that probably allows for even more people to to read it thinking, oh, wow, I don't want a long chapter because that can really deter people when they see that it's so many pages long. So I'm very mindful of you there. Now, I noticed that there is a particular type of character missing from the book. Can you tell us about that? Probably female, right? <laughs> uh, and I can tell you one thing I wrote the, uh, what do you call it, Hollywood treatment <clears throat> for this book. 
And in that I included a wife, a fiance of the main character. And it was at the beginning of the book and uh, it didn't get picked up in the screenplay, but uh, I'm telling you, I tried. I can also tell you that uh, I've written three books and every time I get smarter <laughs> and the last, this is the most recent book that I'm writing, the fourth one, has uh, female characters in it all the way along. So I think uh, that's important. You have to have a love interest. You got to have a female character. And uh, so you have to have plot development. <clears throat> and it's, uh, it's unfortunate that you, you have to write one or two whole books before you pick up certain things. But uh, that's the way you learn. Now, I know that for people that are dinosaur fans, there are particular dinosaurs that they care for. Um, I don't want to say that you, um, you picked a particular dinosaur or that you didn't, but I do want to ask, why did you choose the types of dinosaurs that you did? Really, um, if you'll notice, well, I didn't really name any dinosaurs, uh, the, except for, you know, the T-Rex like, T -Rex -like beast, or I didn't try to become a dinosaur expert in the book. If somebody had uh, transported me back to the Cretaceous period, I wouldn't care what kind of he was and what kind of, I would just try to keep away from him. And I was trying to keep the perspective of the person of the character that it happened to. Uh, so why did I, I know, I know, I know there's a lot of herbivores out there, but they aren't going to come along and eat you. Okay. But the carnivores will. And I know there's a lot of different kind of, uh, carnivores too. So, but, uh, really the most dangerous ones are the biggest ones. So that's kind of how, how it happened. <laughs> so, and I hope I wasn't being, uh, what do you call it, uh, unduly prejudiced about dinosaurs. Now, as far as choosing how you were going to put your book out there, many authors have to decide if they are going to self-publish or if they're going to use a publishing house. Um, some want to retain you know, full control over everything. Some folks say, nope leave it to the professionals. How did you determine which way you were going to go? Okay, I didn't have a choice. I just started out writing a book and uh, the only avenue I saw was uh, getting it published, self-publishing. And uh, it was a long road. <laughs> the company I was with didn't, uh, I didn't get any royalties with and uh, in self-publishing, you really can't make a living off of royalties. Anyway, what you do is build it up uh, and you go for, so far and then you see the next step. Okay, the next step is this and that. I lost a lot of money going the wrong steps, but uh, anyway, you can see as you go farther, you can see, all right, the goal is conventional publishing. That is my goal. And so uh, you have to spend some money in advertising and in making trail, book trailers. And I even, even had to do screenplays and stuff, even though I'm not necessarily going to, I'll get lucky if I can make a film out of it. But, but you just go wherever you can go. And pretty soon uh, another opening will come by and that's what I did. So, and it, it eventually it's kind of like taking the long road to your goal, but you get there. I didn't have somebody uh, hold me by the hand saying, all right, let's go here next and let's go there next. I met quite a few scammers out there and I lost some money. So that's kind of learning the hard way, but it's learning. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for mentioning that.
Well, it is time for us to go to break, but before we do, then can you please remind everyone, what is the title of your book? Where can we get a copy? And how do we stay in contact with you? Okay, this book we're talking about now is called Lost in Time, Trapped in a Prehistoric World. Where you can get the book is uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and uh, numbers of others, including Walmart. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, Pen Culture Solutions is the company where you can also that made this book or published it and you can order it there. Alrighty, everyone. Now you know where you can get a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. Hi, do you have something to share? Be a guest. Want to sponsor an episode? Visit drangelachester.com. Thanks again for watching Daily Spark TV. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for our Daily Spark TV. You guys know who I am. I'm Dr. Angela Butzchester. My guest today is Dan Budsby, and we are talking about his book, Lost in Time, Trapped in a Prehistoric World. Now, Dan, I love the fact that you are allowing us to go on this journey with you in the book. I, I love when you are able to follow along with the on the journey that the author presents to you. Um, that's one of the things that I have heard um, from, from many of the listeners when they comment back to us. Thanks for having that guest on. I was able to follow along. Great book. I know that COVID has kind of put in a damper on authors being able to really go out and about the way that they would like. No more expos right now, all that kind of stuff. What type of, and you kind of touched on it earlier, what type of uh, reader is the ideal reader for you? Did you write this in a way that even our high schoolers would be able to, to read as well? Or do you think that they need to be a little bit older like uh, college graduates? Well, I think there's some, I, I think it's at the level of high school and younger because I purposely left out a whole bunch of complicated language and big words. Uh, but there's still plenty of descriptive words in there uh, that you can use, you can pull in, that everybody can understand. So I think from every age, starting with school age, you know, there are people that would be interested in, in that. So I, uh, so I wrote it for any audience where uh, somebody's looking for uh, adventure. Somebody's looking for having a good time sitting back reading, knowing that they're not going to be the ones that are uh, huddling down in a cave or stuck in the middle of a river and somebody's after them. You know, you, you can actually enjoy the, uh, the book that way. So uh, anybody that likes uh, excitement, uh, adventure, and I also made a mistake on my first book. I didn't put, quite put enough character background in, uh, but this at the same time, uh, it would have been easy to put too much in because this type of book, it's not about who you are and who you used to be. It's about staying alive, okay? So, you, and that's what I tried to focus on. These guys had to work together to stay alive, and that's what they did. Who cares about whether they grew up liking mashed potatoes or not, you know? 
I love, I love that answer. I think that that is, that is so true. And you know, um, you're right. We read different types of books for, for different things. And in all of the time travel movies and books that we read, you're right. I mean, it's, it's nice to know whether or not he likes mashed potatoes, but if we don't know, that's okay too. We really want to know how are you going to get out of this situation or what's around the next corner. So you, you're right. You're right there. Now, when it comes to being an author, I know that many authors wish that they had had that mentor, that they had that person that could tell them what to do next. Um, if there's any piece of advice that you could give to an aspiring author out there that you wish that perhaps you had had when you were going through the process, what would that piece of advice be? I think the advice I would give would be, be yourself and don't try to fit into a mold. Uh, you got to be yourself and everybody's got some creativity in them. They have to, they have to uh, access that and they have to pull it out and, and use it. And then uh, being yourself, you can write, uh, write, uh, just try to write what you're thinking about. Don't try to say, okay, I have to use this, this kind of a style and that kind of a style is not good enough. I have to, get, I have to put some more bigger words in there. You're gonna fail that way. <laughs> so that's why I, I kind of try to uh, not put too many big words because there's always somebody that doesn't understand it or maybe I'm gonna make a fool out of myself and use a word the wrong way or something. But. Just keep it simple and direct and meaningful. You know, I could not agree with you more when you say just be yourself and be authentic. I think that that's what most people appreciate and like about anything that's presented to them. You know, from talk shows, podcasts, books, you just want that person to be authentic in whatever it is that they're presenting to you. Even when you're being fanciful, they want you to still be who you are and present it, present it in, in your way and in your style. So I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. Now, I know that many authors um, aspire to uh, do particular things as writers. Some have said, I want to create a series of books. Others have said, Dr. Angela, listen, God told me to write one book. I've written that one book. I'm done. I'm just supposed to share this one book. Do you have any hopes and aspirations to continue to write? Um, do you want to do a series of books? What's on the horizon for you? Yeah, in fact, I've written a, a sequel to one of my books already. It's being published as we speak. But and the other one, this one uh, that we're talking about, I'm I'm about a third of the way done writing its sequel. So I like to. I guess that's kind of making a series, right? Uh, so I don't know what happens after the second book, but I'm going to find out when I get there. So I'm actually working on my fourth book. So. Uh, I actually started a, uh, uh, another independent time travel book that, that's not related to either of these two. And I got for a few chapters on that and I got bogged down, but so uh, anyway, you, you kind of got to go with your gut feeling. And if your gut feeling says go with the sequel, then do that, I think. And that's what happened. You know, I, I love that you mentioned that you're doing several books, that you're in process with several books. I found that that seems to be something that authors do, much like songwriters. And I think you, you talked about that in the beginning, that creative process, that you're always writing or doing something, that you're, you're never going to write that one book, you know, from start to finish and then do the next creative people have so many ideas that there's so there's so many um irons in the in the fire that you just have to keep it all going so i love that you have probably just kind of perked someone's ears up saying oh so it is okay for me to work on book number one and book number next at the same time so i appreciate you're doing that 
Now, the one question that I try to ask everyone who comes on the show is about their faith and moving forward. Now, we're on Christian TV, and faith is very important to who I am and to who many of my guests are. Now, what's the disclaimer? Not asking if you go to church every Sunday, not asking what denomination you are, but asking a very general question of how do you think that your faith has played a part in making you the person that you are today? I think uh, it's played a major part because, I don't know, without, without a faith in uh, whatever you want to call it, God, uh, higher power, without that, I think we're just, uh, we're just objects we're, with a couple eyes and a mouth and a nose. I mean, uh, it's kind of like it gives you the purpose uh, for life. <clears throat> so faith in God kind of leads to faith in your fellow man and faith in whatever your ability to write. And, uh, and in this case, it is right. So, uh, and you can impart that in your characters. If you don't have a, a faith in your own life, how can you write a book with characters that have faith that, that the readers can actually get something out of that? So it plays a major role, I think. Absolutely. And, you know, that tends to be something that I find that many of the authors that I spend time with as well, they would agree with you that it, it doesn't matter if you are an, an avid churchgoer or you are just simply someone who spends contemplative time with, with God, you know, when you're having your morning coffee, um, but that your faith really is what keeps you going. It kind of, it, it pushes you to continue to move forward and it really prompts you along your life. So I, I love it. I love it. Well, Dan, we are out of time, but before I let you go, can you remind everyone of the title of your book? Um, what's your website address? I want to make sure that everyone is able to visit with you there. And I know the book is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all of that, but um, if anyone wants to reach out to you, what's the best way to do that? DanTheTimeWriter.com. But the, the book is Lost in Time, Trapped in a Prehistoric World. So, and, and to get a hold of me, uh, uh, jakeblake at gmail.com. And the Blake has two A's in it. So that's easy. Thank you again for spending some time with me here on Daily Spark TV. I truly enjoyed my time with you today. Well, me too. And I sure appreciate it. And viewers, thank you for spending time with us here today as well. I hope that we have enlightened, inspired, and empowered you to be your best self today. As always, may the Lord continue to shine his face upon you. May you receive his grace and his mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, remember that you are blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Welcome to Daily Spark TV. Are you an author with a faith-based book? Be a guest. Serious about your product or service and want to try something new? Sponsor an episode. I see you're ready to get started. So visit DrAngelaChester.com. Thanks again for watching Daily Spark TV.